Zayin. Before we call upon the Chacham to say his words of Chizuk, I want to share with you a very short story. A very short story that I told over to our board of directors. They're scattered around over here. It's very hard to, to see everyone. A short story that's very powerful. And I personally, when I read it, I was very inspired. I believe everyone here will be inspired as well. People, people commemorated Yom HaShoah this week. Hashem Yerachem. Six million people. Six million Jews were brutally murdered by the Nazis. Six million people. And when the war is over, Moray Rabutai, it wasn't over. You had so many refugees, so many people left without their families, so many displaced. Balagan Shalem, as you can imagine. Tremendous, tremendous Balagan. There were 24 students. 24 students that were stuck in Italy. 24 students stuck in Italy after the war. And they were about to be deported back to Poland. If they get sent back to Poland, it's basically a death sentence. They're not coming back alive. There were Gilei Israel in America that had a committee to save the refugees. One of them was Hagaon Arab Aaron Kutler Zatzav. He was the founder of Lakewood Yeshiva, probably one of the most prominent yeshivas in the world today. They said we have to find a way to save these kids from Italy. Who is going to help them save these kids? None other than we have to contact the Italian mafia. They're stuck in Italy, got to contact the mafia to try to get this, <coughs> these kids out. They admit they had the right connections, right? Not sure who they spoke to, but they got the connections through the Italian mafia. They make a meeting, just think, we have Aaron Kudder, Rosh Yeshiva, meeting Joe Bonanno. Anyone here heard of Joe Bonanno? Raise your hands, anyone? You heard of him. How'd you hear of him from Barber Park? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Barber Park. Bar Park. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the case may be, Morai Barabutai, they had a meeting with Joe Bonanno. Morai Barabutai, Rav Aaron Kudler walks in with two other rabbis. He walks in with two other rabbis to this meeting. Joe Bonanno's sitting there, beautiful suit. He has a cigar in his mouth. How can I help you people? They sit down. And they decide Rav Aaron Cutler is going to start speaking in Yiddish. He's speaking Yiddish to an Italian maf mafioso. They said that. The rabbi said, telling the story, there's 24 students in Italy. Joe Bonanno has no clue what's being said. So his helper, Rabbi Shapiro, tells Rav Aaron, I'll translate. He starts translating. And Joe Bonanno stops. Rabbi Shapiro is like, don't disturb the rabbi. He's speaking very beautifully. I don't think I ever heard this in my life. <laughs> Usually people try to cut my speech short. But here you have, you have an Italian mafioso telling him, leave the rabbi speaking in Yiddish. The rabbi keeps talking and talking and talking. The story is over. <clears throat> Joe Bonanno says, someone please interpret what he said. And he tells him, listen, there's 24 Jewish students stuck in Italy. If they get sent to Poland, they're dead. Could you get them out? So Mr. Bonanno tells him, no problem. How do you want them to come here? By boat or by plane? So Rav Aaron Kutler says, what did he say? So he tells him, Rabbi, how do you want? Boat or plane? He says, whatever is faster, you do it. So Joe Bonanno says, no problem. Today is Wednesday. By Friday morning, they're all going to be here. Wow. Rav Aaron Kutler quickly taps his helper. He says, what do I do with the cash? We have to give the, the mafioso something for his, for his work, right? So ask him how much money we have to give him for this operation. So Moray Rabutai, Rabbi Shabiro says, Mr. Bonanno, you know, we want to help support your, your tzedakah fund, whatever it is that you do over there. Right? How much do we have to give you for this operation? Listen what Mr. Bonanno says, Moray Rabutai. He says, tell the rabbi, I don't want his money. Tell the rabbi I want his blessings. Oh, he's a smart man. Smart man. Now, Morai Butai, they tell Rabbi Cutler, Rabbi, the man wants your bracha, your blessing. Morai Butai, listen to what he says. The rabbi gives him a bracha. Du zot starbin in bet. Arab, what are you talking about? He said, I bless you, you should die in bed. He gave a bracha to the head of the mafia. I bless you to die in your bed. For the mafia, that's the biggest bracha in the world. Oh. You have to die in your bed. It doesn't get better than that. It's Ganeden. Right? It's Ganeden. <laughs> Joe Bonanno was the happiest guy. 
I don't know if he kissed the rabbi's hands, but he said, Rabbi, that's the best blessing. Right? He thanked him for this blessing. And by met two days later, the 24 students, summary, summary, I got to America. My wife and Rabotai, listen to this. Joe Bonanno was jailed one time in his life. He had three assassination attempts against him, survived all of them. And he lived to his 90s and died of a heart attack in his bed. Wow. Now listen very carefully. Rabbi Aaron Cutler's daughter, Rabbi Tish Schwartzman, look what she says. <coughs> she says her father got a lot of criticism for what he did. Oh, you're going with the mafia. What, well, you're supporting it? What's going on? How's that rabbi act? Your rabbis are all uh, part of this gang. What's happening over here? He got a lot of criticism for this. And listen to what his daughter said, Rabbi Aaron Cutler's daughter said. She said, my father would bow down to the Pope in order to save a Jewish child. He would bow down to the Pope to save a Jewish child. Rabbi Aaron Cutler, when we talk about the greatest rabbis in America, you think about Rabbi Moshe Feinzi, Lubavitcher Rebbe, you think about Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, you think about great Sadiqim. To think that he would bow down to the Pope, Mugai Rabbi, that doesn't make sense. But that's what he says to save a Jewish child. Why are we gathered here tonight, Mugai Rabbi, ladies and gentlemen? I want you to understand, in our community, we have approximately 10,000 Bukharian kids in public schools. The number 10,000 is a very scary number. This community in Jamaica states has also, let's talk in a lot, Jamaica states, Fresh Meadows, all neighboring uh, uh, cities, a lot of public school kids, Hashem Yilachem. Hashem Yilachem. It's a big, big problem. And unfortunately, drugs is on the rise. Crime, on the rise. Assimilation, on the rise. I'm sure all the rabbis sitting in the deal with couples, they see what's going on. How many intermarriages we have in Hashem Yilachem? How many kids are on, are Hashem Yishmo smoking things? I can tell over stories, I don't want to give people a bad feeling, God forbid. Noai Rabutai, we have to get together and say, die. Enough. This can't continue. But we don't have to bow down to no Pope, and we don't need the Mafia's help for this. We could save these youth if our community will be united. Amen. If we're going to be Ba'achdut, working together. And don't say, oh, he's from Jamaica State, he's Fresh Meadows, he's Forest Hills, he's Regal Park. Everyone together, trying to save these children, we're going to make a tremendous, tremendous revolution, Bezrat Hashem. And I want you to understand, in Queens, Chazak has affiliation to about 20 shuls and synagogues and organizations where we put work together to take kids out of public school into yeshivot. And since August, when Chacham David came in August, we put 200 plus kids approximately, directly, indirectly, together, into yeshivot from public schools, you know what that means? 200 kids, but there's thousands more. Thousands more. And today we're gathered to try to help this matzav over here, Jamaica State's Fresh Meadows. I want you to know, Chacham David, it's a miracle he's even here for a day and a half. You know, it wasn't meant to be mamash kacha, and when the Rav hears that we call, he says, Ani Yaazor for these public school kids. And he came here, the Shem Shamay Morai Rabutai. I want you to understand, I mentioned this in Forest Hills last month, or two months ago. The Rav, Richard, I was in your office recently, you have all these books behind your desk. I asked your wife if those books were real. Are they just like a cover just to look good in the picture? I actually went over. They're real books, you know. And these books, five, six, seven, eight hundred pages of, of, of things and, and, and law and who knows what. The Rav writes, Shia Bari, I know he's not, he's not going to be happy I'm talking about this. He's written 25 such books, six, seven hundred pages each on Jewish law. And he has probably 30, 40 that he wants to work on to 120, Shia Bari. No, he's Mesirun Nefesh to writing halakha. Following his father's path, Chacham of Adiyah Yosef, in writing Halakhan at the same time, spreading Torah. You should know the Rav has a kola in Yerushalayim, approximately 200 young rabbis sitting and learning all day long. And he creates rabbis to go to France, to Brazil, to be rabbis all over Israel. Here in New York, we have a few of his students, Baruch Hashem. He has a kola. He gives classes all over Eretz Yisrael to inspire people. So, Moray Rabutai, the fact that the Rav showed up here today, we have other Rabbanim Chashuvim, Baruch Hashem, from the Keila. We have over here many people that showed up. Like I said, Askanin have nothing to do with the Bukharian community. Reb Ruben Wolf, nothing to do. Reb Chaskel, you Bukharian by any chance? Last time I checked, it doesn't sound like it is. Right? People that have nothing to do. Rabbi Butler, 
Although you're, you're, you're involved in the Bukharian, so I, I can't give you this, uh, this credit. You're already part of the Bukharian community. But there's others from Barber Park and Muncie and Lakewood that have nothing to do with us that came here tonight to tell Jamaica states and Pashmaras we're with you. We're going to support. We want to support and help get these kids out of public schools and into Yeshivot Bezrat Hashem. Keep them off the streets, away from crime, away from drugs. Morai Brabutai, we're going to call upon the big kavod, the tremendous, tremendous honor to have over here, like we said, not just the son of Chacham of Adiyah Yosef. Yes, it's true, he has a father that was world-renowned, probably one of the greatest minds and geniuses of the last 100, 200 years, no question about it. But I always tell people, even if his name was not Rav David Yosef, even if he was Rav David Yosef, he was Bukharian, he would still be considered one of the greatest rabbis of our generation. His, his greatness is not because he's the son of someone. His greatness is because he's developed into a great person himself with Hadmada, and, and he puts his time into the community and to learning Torah. So again, it's a great honor for all of us to have, to hear words of Chizuk. Merai Rabotai, please rise as you call upon Chacham David Yosef Shalita. This evening, I just came now from the Shiva of someone from the Syrian community. And um, I spoke there. The message I said there, I think I have to tell you too. The men, simple men, I'm telling you, simple men, he kept Shabbat, he put tefillin every day, he prayed, I hope he prayed uh, three times a day, I'm not sure, but I had to speak about him. What could I say about him? This man has a child, rich, very rich, Yeresha mine learning Torah, keeping mitzvot. His son, two years ago, donated a school in Eretz Israel in a place that uh, people don't have religious school. It means that all the children, if they don't go to that school, they could go only, only way they could go to a secular school. You think you have simulation here in Israel, no? I'm sorry to tell you. In Israel we have now one million children from the kindergarten until the end of the high school. They don't know to say Shema Israel. Nothing. And we have maybe six, seven hundred thousand Russian, maybe more, and many of them married not to Jewish women. So it means the children are not Jewish. So we are fighting here in Eretz Israel, every, everywhere, against that. We see the situation that we talk to Jewish people, you, you go to Tel Aviv. Sometimes you go to some areas in Tel Aviv, you feel you are not in Eretz Israel, you are in Paris. Friday night, you go, you see, terrible. We have to cry about that. We say, we, we laugh from time to time about that, we laugh. But it's sad. We have jokes about that. Sad jokes. I will tell you a joke. You know, in a class, when you have, you call it blackboard, yes? In Hebrew, how to say blackboard? Luach. 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 Luchot. How you say the tablets of the testimony? Luchot. So one inspector went to a school, high school, not religious. As he sa and he said, who broke the Luchot, who broke the tablets of testimony, Luchot. Quiet, nobody answered. He looked at uh, one child, he told me, you tell me, who broke the Luchot? The child became white, he said, I swear to you, I didn't do that. 
I didn't do that. The inst inspector was shocked. He told the teacher, you heard his answer? What do you say about that? The teacher said, mister, I have to tell you, you don't know this child. I don't know him. He's a very good student. I promise you he didn't do that. <laughs> he went to the principal. He told him, look, so ignorant in your school. The child said like that, and the teacher said like that. The principal said, what? You, it's cost, it's very cheap, the blackboard. Let me pay for that and enough. It's not a joke. It's a real story. Real story, Rabotai. It's very sad to see that. And we, we have to cry about that. Hashem is crying. He sees his children. He is losing them. Hayeled enenu vani ana aniba. Our my children, Hashem said, my children. How can you sit? You have Torah, you have mitzvot, you have everything, and you don't care about the, your brothers. You don't care about them. How come? Abota, Abota, one neshama, one soul. If we save, we don't know what will happen from this child. You heard the name of uh, Karl Marx? Yes. Karl Marx. We lost two, three million Jewish people at least because of Karl Marx. He was Jewish. But he didn't get a Jewish education. You heard the name of Trotsky? Trotsky was with Lenin. And uh, he was the head of the army of Lenin. Then he ran away from Stalin to Mexico. Stalin sent someone, killed him. But Trotsky was responsible for the revolution of the communists, maybe more than Lenin. Very strong man. He was learning in Jewish school, elementary school. High school. His father didn't have money to pay. He went to Goyim, and he became the worst enemy of Jewish people. With the communists, we lost two, three million Jewish people. We lost them, and who is responsible? Trotsky. Suppose he would go to Jewish school, maybe the opposite, because he was a strong man. Charismatic, strong, it could change many things. So we lost Jewish, one Jewish man, and it was terrible for all of Am Israel. Suppose we will do the opposite. Every child, every neshama, we don't know what will happen. Who will be the leader? Who will be the greatest? Talmit Chacham, we don't know. And Rabotai, don't speak about Talmit Chacham, about to remain a Jew, to say Shema Israel, to marry a Jewish girl. You have here Rabbi Ruben Wolf, Tzaddik, he has a school, school, all of them, 90%, I think, Bukharis. Yes. And I met there, I wasn't at the school, I enjoyed, I was very excited to see it. In the end, one of the teachers, young woman, came to me. She talked to me two minutes. I was crying. I felt so bad. Young woman, very religious. She said, Rabbi, Baruch Hashem, I'm a teacher here. I was student in this school. Now I'm a teacher here. My husband is a rabbi. But I have two sisters. We were three. Somebody came. He had some money. He took me from the public school to the Jewish school. I married a rabbi. My two sisters, one married Italian goy, the other one married Russian goy. I heard that, I started to cry. When you see it, you deal with that. It, it feels so bad to see it. 
I will give you another story, happier story. About 20 years ago, one young lady, an Israeli, she left Israel, she came here, she was very poor. And uh, she had three boys, Israelis, very smart. But the boys, she didn't have, she didn't know what to do, what school to send them, so no school. From the morning until evening, they were walking in the streets. Israelis, they didn't know English, but very quick they learned English. They were talking like, you know, like black people. Very, no, not nice English. And I came, I saw them, I was shocked. And I talked to her. She said, what can I do? What can I do? I don't know which school, what, you want me to send them to Goim? Jewish people, they will not accept them because they don't have money. And she herself, she was very poor. She asked me to help her. So I rented a basement for her with some rabbis we paid for that. We found a job for her. And then I went to rabbi in, in Brooklyn. I begged him to take the children. I begged him. At the beginning, he said no. Then he agreed to interview the children. He was impressed. And then he told me, OK, who will pay? I told him, what do you mean, who will pay? It's big mitzvah. He said, mitzvah, mitzvah, but I have I need money for the school. It's private school. I said, how much money you want? He said, 5,000. It was 20, maybe 25 years ago. The youngest is, is your age, 25 years ago, yes. I said, okay, I will give you 5,000. I will give you 5,000. He accepted the children. And after I saw he accepted them, I ran away to Israel. <laughs> Three months later, I went to visit them. The rabbi saw me. He said, uh, what about the $5,000? I said, you're joking. He said, no, no, I'm not joking. I need the money. You promised me. I said, OK. I'm not a rich man. I didn't have that money. I went and collected the money. I gave him. Since that, I, from time to time, I have to give him money. And I had to talk to the children to see how they learn. Now, the bottom line. The three, Baruch Hashem, now uh, they got married. One of them is a Rosh Yeshiva in that place, Rosh Kolel in that place. He's genius. Gaon in Jerusalem, in, in New York. The youngest one in Jerusalem is Rosh Yeshiva of Kiruv, bringing children with drugs, with problems here in America, and bring them to Israel one, two years, make them Yeresh Amayim, good people, and send them back to America. When I did it, I just thought to save that three boys not to, to remain Jewish, that's what, only that. And I didn't think I, I will make two big, big Talmud. The third one is good man also, but two leaders, Talmud HaChamim. How many learn Torah from that two? About I am telling you, I, I don't know what is happening in the next world with Hashem, but I know what it is written in the holy books. The biggest zechut we can make in this world and to have zechut forever after 120 years is that this zechut. To save souls. I feel jealous from Ruben Wolf, all the rabbis sitting here. I know that they, Shalom Aleichem. I know they walk all the time about that. They dedicate their life to save children from public school. So Rabotai, I'm saying again, Ayele Denenu, Vani Ana Aniba, 
after 120 years, we will come to Hashem. We will face Hashem. He will ask us, what did you do in this world? We will say, yes, we put the tefillin, we ate matzah, we held shofar, we fulfilled the mitzvot. Hashem will say, yes, but what about your brothers? Did you have feeling for your brothers? Did you think about them that they didn't have the opportunity to put the tefillin and to keep mitzvot? And why didn't you do anything that they will say, Shema Israel? They will pray to me. They are your brothers. So, Abutai, <coughs> I'm telling you, this is the biggest zechut you can have in your life. In your life. The biggest zechut. My father, all the time, my father, Allah Shalom, you know, he was the greatest Talmud Hacham. He loved to study. But when he was invited to talk to people about education, about keeping mitzvot, he went to the other side of the world all of his life. And he told me always, you think I like it? No. But I'm doing that because I know this is the biggest zechut I will have, and that's what Hashem wants from me. <coughs> so, Abotai, I... I met Rabbi Ilan Meir of two years ago, two, three years ago, and we, him and his brother Yaniv, together, they walk. I'm telling you, like I said, Lavdil, Trotsky made revolution. Rabbi Ilan and his brother will make revolution. <laughs> Big revolution starts with small revolution. And tonight, we are starting the evolution, Be'ezrat Hashem. Everyone should be part of Chazak. And Be'ezrat Hashem, Chazak, Chazak, Benit Chazek. Amen.